Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning uh, and welcome to you all. We're not quite so many in number this morning. However, it doesn't matter how many we are, does it? Because the Bible says that where two or three, just two or three are gathered, uh, there Jesus says, I am with you. And what is very interesting when you think about that, I heard a story from North Korea where they formed a church in a, in a it's like a concentration camp because... They were in prison for being Christians. And uh, where they, they knew the guards wouldn't go was the toilets. So there was just two or three of them at a time in the loo. But they knew that the Lord was with them. And they said these most powerful stories of encountering Jesus through those awful conditions where there was just two or three. So we count our blessings today, don't we? And know that we are bigger, in, bigger than that, but we... Uh, even when there's just a few of us, we are gathered as God's people uh, here today. Um, welcome to those online as well, of course. Uh, we hope that you're able to join in. You may be in a warmer place than us, but uh, if you're there, we are welcome you as well. Today, Joy's going to be speaking to us a bit about unity. We're thinking again, continuing our little time in 1 Corinthians, just the beginning of Paul's letter to the Corinthians and during the service this is uh, an all-age service but during the sermon uh, and the reading and the sermon uh, there'll be sort of a craft activity that people can go out to and you don't need to be under 18 to do that you can go at any age so it is open and welcome to anyone who wants to join in with that we'll have our notices later uh, so uh, we will now um, I'm going to ask you a question. So, just to get your minds warmed up, something, get something warm. <laughs> get your minds warmed up this morning. I'm going to ask, um, right, okay, I'd like you to either stand up or raise your hand if you have blonde hair. Any blonde, any blondies? Uh, stand up if you're able to. Stand up if you're able to. That's all right. I'm going to, there ain't that many blondies here. Paul used to. Uh, yes, I could probably believe that. Right, okay, uh, thanks, Blondies. Uh, okay, uh, hands up those who, at least when, uh, when they were a bit younger maybe, had dark hair, like brown hair. Stand up if you're able to, or, or just uh, raise a hand will do, that's fine. Uh, oh, we've got more, we're brunette. This church is brunette, we're not blonde. Okay, sit down. Redheads. Reds. There aren't many of us either. Well, no, I believe you, Olive. Stunning. I've seen your wedding photo, actually, although it was black and white, I think. But anyway, there we are. Um, so, um, <laughs> right, okay, so, right, okay. Uh, okay, brown eyes. Stand up if you're able to. Brown eyes. Okay, um, Steve, um, Karen, what, co what colour are Karen's eyes? Just... <laughs> uh, <laughs> In case anyone doesn't know, so brown eyes, you can sit down again. Blue eyes. Well, there are a good number of us. I think blue, I think we're more blue than brown. Anyone got green, uh, sit down, blues. Green, anyone got green eyes? In our, green, greens. There's a few of us greens. Well done, there are a few green. Hazel. Hazel, there is a hazel. One hazel, two hazel. 
Wow, that's amazing. And, and Jackie can see through her hazel eyes now. So, yeah, she's had, she's had her new glasses. Um, okay, um, so where are we now? Okay, hands up those who, or stand up if you're able, who like sport, like doing sports, being in a team, watching sport. Right, you're into the football team for our church. That's great. Okay, sit down. There are a good few of you. Um, those who like reading. Okay, stay standing or sitting. Are there any, put a, um, put a, if you're sitting, put another hand up. If you're standing, put a hand up if you like sport and reading. Ooh, okay, that's pretty good. We're pretty sporty and clever. That's great, okay. Uh, okay, sit down. Um, hands up those who like lying in a, on the beach. In a hot place, not, not in Blackpool. Okay, uh, okay, that's great. Hands up those who like climbing mountains. Or standing up. Climbing mountains? Okay, hands up those who like sleeping. <laughs> uh, the parents of the younger ones over there are, are right up there. That's great. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Sit down. Okay, uh, who likes pizza? Pizza, pizza. Okay, hands down. Stand here. Uh, hot curry, like really, really hot curry. The kind of stuff that makes Dudley right. Dudley right. Dudley's doing us a curry. What is it going to be? I don't even know what the hot. What is the hottest curry you can have? Dudley's is the hottest. Does he really do a hot curry? I heard it was a fowl. Is a fowl, is that, is that hot? Vindaloo, is Vindaloo? <laughs> right, you need to go and talk to our friend Sheila and, and Dudley because they clearly know what hot curry is and we don't. Okay, that's fine. Okay, one more, one more. Um, <coughs> okay, who likes heavy metal music? Hands up. Yes. Actually, not many. Okay. Oh, you <laughs> there are one or two. By the way, just as a, a, a word, if you with Dave, halfway through a meeting, his phone goes off. It's normally got Black Sabbath or something. <laughs> or, you know, Led Zeppelin or something coming through the phone. Um, there we are. So that's good. Uh, right. Um, who likes classical music? Classical music. Okay. Who likes uh, folk music? Are you all, I think the same people are putting that. Has anyone not put their hand up for every type of music? There are a few of you. Great, okay. Right, if you were in this room now and sat, stood where I stand, lots of people like and do and have different features. And it's, we're all different. We may be all different. But when we come here and when we belong to God, we somehow are one in Christ. We belong together to God, though we are different. And today we're going to be thinking a little bit about that, and uh, um, Joy will be speaking a bit into that, about how though we are many and different, we are one, and we should be united as God's people. So that's kind of what we are thinking about today. And you'll see there on the next slide, you'll see that I tried to find a a graphic that would say we're all different, but we're joined together. We're joined together by Jesus. So uh, with that thought in our mind, and it's a great thought, isn't it? Uh, that we belong to the family of God. That we're going to now stand to, to worship. We're going to have two songs together. The first one's a famous hymn. And in your songbook, that's number 50. And then straight after that, we'll go into Mighty to Save, which is number 15. So that's easy to remember, 550 and then 1515 straight afterwards. But all the words are on the screen. Should we stand to sing?
to say, He is mighty to say, forever, author of salvation, heroes and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the So I'm just going to pray our special prayer for today. We thank you, Lord, that as we gather together here today, that you are with us, and that in Christ you make all things new. So transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. So come, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, have a seat. And uh, as we worship God, so good to worship God, isn't it? Uh, it warms the soul and uh, it's so good. We're going to have a quick quiz. Uh, so on our, let's, uh, who's, uh, I don't know how awake you are this morning, Sunday morning, but uh, let's, let's give it a go. So first one, uh, and Matt, just so you know, you'll have to uh, press for each uh, little bullet point that comes up. So what is Harry Potter's middle name? Now you're going to have three choices. So Matt's going to press three times. Is it A, David, B, James, C, Weasley? Now, okay, so hands up for A. <coughs> hands up for A. A any A's? <laughs> You're looking at me. Uh, B. Seventy-eight point six percent of us say. This is, this is a bit like, what's that thing, what's that quiz show where the, um, how many percent you get, what is it called? The, who, his dad's, okay, his dad, oh right, well don't give it away. Uh, so, and um, C, is it C, Weasley, hands up C's? I'm sure that, I'm sure I had a friend with a nickname like that, but anyway. Um, okay, the answer is, it is, uh, you don't need to press anything Matt for now, it is what is it? B. Yes, you were right. Majority of people were right. Second question. Of, of which state in Australia would you find the Great Barrier Reef? Is it A, New South Wales? B, Tasmania? C, Queensland? Hands up for A, New South Wales. Some people just give it a guess. Give it a guess. It's a couple of, couple of, couple of New South Wales, Queen, uh, Tasmania. Hands up. One, one, one very tentative person. Queensland. Most people, 88.6% of people say, uh, it's like one of those, what's that, what is that quiz? You know, and it's, and you know, it's, and you go, and 86% and, and of our people polled said, Family fortunes, thank you. That was the one I was thinking of. Family. New job for me, new career. Um, anyway, the answer is C. Hey, well done. Uh, and wouldn't it be lovely to have a free trip to see the Great Barrier Reef and the Gold Coast? Anyway, stop dreaming. Okay, next one. What is the most eaten food in the world? Is it A, <coughs> rice, B, corn, C, bread? Hands up for A, rice. Quite a few people, 53% of you said rice. C, oh sorry, B, corn. C, bread. Good number of bakers in the room. And I would have said bread, but it is in fact A, 
it is rice. Who knew? I mean, obviously, some people knew, but because um, you put your hands up and some people are nodding firmly and say, of course it's rice. Um, I do like rice. Any, anyone got a favourite type of rice? Brown rice. Basmati rice. Rice pudding. Uh, yeah, that's got to be a winner. Uh, so anyway, rugby league. In rugby league, how many points is a converted try? Is it A, 7, B, 5, C, 6? Hands up thinking it's 7. Some people there are saying 7. Yeah, pretty good. B, 5? A few people saying 5. C, 6. Well, there's about 33% of you say six, and you are right. It is six. Rugby union, it's seven, and in rugby union, a try is five points. But confusingly, in rugby league, a drop kick is only one point. I mean, all that effort for one point. Uh, anyway, there you are. I mean, um, uh, you know, anyway, uh, I'll get over my rugby thing. Um, I think this may be the final question. How many bones are in the human body? Is it A? I can see the medics are going to totally wipe me on this. 320, B, 206, or C, 132. 132. Now, some of us have fewer bones or fewer working bones than, uh, than others, but actually, how many bones are in the normal human body? 320, hands up, 320. Number of you say 320. Uh, 206. 206, uh, and C is 132. I think I've forgotten the <laughs> I think it's 206. Is anyone willing to contest that? Could somebody Google it? Kathy, Google it for us. How many bones are in the human body? Um, uh, great. Uh, so how, who got five out of five? Grace got five. Give her a round of applause. I was going to get you to confer together. Now, none of you, apart from Grace, got five out of five. Had we worked together, we would have got five. And between us, we got five. And uh, it's 206. Just, it's just come in, confirmed. 206 bones are in your body. So if you're not sure, go and get an x-ray. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they'll tell you at the hospital. Um, so um, together, we would have got five. We all together got five. Together we are better, aren't we? I suppose we could say that as well. So now, I think we're going to have... I've already, I've already prayed our special prayer. It felt like at the end of worship, we just needed to pray that. I, that's my favourite prayer. I don't know if you've got a favourite prayer. One thing I want to encourage you for during the service is, has everyone seen one of these? Just before we have our Bible reading, let me point you to... Has everyone got one of these cards? You would have seen them on the... If you haven't got one, we've got more at the back and we can hand them out uh, so that's not a problem so this is an encouragement card and I wonder whether during the service or afterwards at coffee or during the week you might want to just appreciate someone and tell them how much you admire you know something that you really like about them like you know your, re you, your smile always cheers me up or you know you always you know, look out for me, or, you know, your singing is brilliant, or, you know, whatever it is, because have a think, have a look around during the service and think, I wonder who you could encourage just by writing them something here, or writing it down and telling them, but it would be better to pass on the card, because actually it's when we stop and look at each other and appreciate each other that we can see how amazing those people are and the gifts that they have. And they feel better as well because it reminds them we so often forget what we're good at. And, um, and we all, every one of us, have gifts and strengths from God that we bring to our church family together. So have a think. You may be thinking that now. Um, you may already have something in mind. But have a think during the service and then um, you can pass them on at the end. Okay? Is that okay? We're going to have our Bible reading. I'm going to invite those. If anyone wants to go and do a craft now, now would be the time to, to go and do that. And then Joy will preach, and then we'll all come back together uh, for uh, our final act of worship. Is that okay, Kate? Oh, you know. Great. It's on that side. Yeah. So it's on this side. Anyone who wants to go through, Olive's going to uh, read for us now. Thank you, Olive. And uh, anyone, doesn't that, you don't have to be under 18. Feel free to move into that room there.
reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 to 18. Divisions in the church. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you should be in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the name, in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that none can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephaninus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Talking about unity, I'd never noticed my, this, this is what I call my sermon book, okay? Everything goes in here, right? Handwritten, type, whatever. But on the front of it, it's got a big U. <laughs> never noticed that before. So there's God speaking to us, okay. Right, sort of carrying on from where Mike uh, was talking to us last week from um, Paul's letter. Divisions, divisions, divisions. But I say unity, unity, unity. We are living in such a polarised world at the moment. Not one country, creed, belief seem immune. Everybody wants to get their own little bit in. The individual voice wants to be heard. And I'm often part of that, I have to admit, and I pray for God's mercy. A new fad takes off quickly to be discarded. How many New Year's resolutions have we ditched already? But as Paul warns us in his letter to the Corinthians, it was actually no different in his day. Human nature is what it is, sadly. But we know, as Christians, we have one solid, unifying force in the purity of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center of our faith. He is the center and cornerstone of our church, for he is our church, or he should be. In Christ, divisions, polarizations between church bodies, ethnic backgrounds, education levels, gender, income, class, political affiliation break down, or indeed they should. In Christ, we have neither north nor south, east nor west, as written in the hymn by John Oxenholm in 1908. In Christ, there is no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no free person, no man or no woman, no man, woman, child, no old person, no young person. We are all one in him, 
or so we should be. In one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. I must admit, I was a little bit concerned doing this this morning. Not about the message, but reading it, I could have ended up speaking a load about history and a load about theology. And I was really, t- that's where it was all ending and going. So if there's a little bit of this in here, I really please forgive me. Because uh, I do think the letter owes a little bit to obviously the contextual issues of the time and, and, and of now. So the context of Paul's letter, our reading for this morning, is highly relevant. Paul founded the church in Corinth on his secondary missionary journey. But sadly, 18 months later, arguments and divisions had broken out. And some church members slipped back into extremely immoral ways. In fact, Mike spoke about this last week. Um, And Paul wrote this letter to address the problems, to clear up the confusion about right and wrong for the Corinthians. People had a reputation of jumping from one fad to another, whatever they felt was believing at the time, well, I'll go that way. Whatever is that way, I'll go that way. But Paul wanted to keep Christianity pure, to prevent it from becoming just a fad. He stressed the vital message that Christ is the centre of the faith. Verse 13, he asks, doesn't he, has Christ been divided? In verse 10, he says, there should be no divisions, but that you should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. We should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. But what is this same mind? That it is Christ who is the cornerstone of our faith. That it is through Christ's suffering on the cross we are saved. That it is in Christ's resurrection We are given hope. Not through man's. I've ditched all that now. I said that last time. I don't even... I think what's going on in this world, I've put all that in the bin. And I focus wholly on what Christ has done for me. And it's that that gives me this hope to carry on one day to the next. And what is this same purpose? That we all strive to show non-believers the power and love of Jesus through our compassionate actions, not through our selfish egos. I want to just slip something else in there. There's a man outside Tesco's in the bail called James, a homeless man, and he's there most days of the week. And when I pass him, I either have a little word with him, I say a little prayer for him, I give him a little bit of money, I might buy him a coffee. But on Tuesday when I passed him, it really, really got to me because he looked so dejected. And he just said to me, nobody cares anymore. And do you know what? I went home with tears in my eyes. It was so sad to hear this. Nobody cares anymore. So we as Christians, considering what is going on in in our worlds at the moment, we have even more responsibility to show people that we care. Through this undying love, the Christian church has been able to survive and even thrive these last 2,000 years, although you wouldn't think of it in the Western world. Yet sadly, congregations are not much different from the church in Corinth. At times, congregations are, we have factions beset by differences. We are all human beings. We are all fallen by nature. We are all sinful. And our egos always seem to win. Non-believers seem to think that when Christians enter their church buildings, we all seem to leave our sinful natures on the doorstep, out in the cold, right? Um, Only for us to pick them up when we go out again. We hear people often saying, don't we? I believe in God, but church is not for me. My reply to this is always, we are all fallen people. We all make mistakes. But by coming together as a Christian body, We can at least feel some unity and relationship with fellow believers, albeit in its perfection. Now, I don't know whether you feel this, but every time I've come to church on a Sunday, I might have felt a bit fed up in the morning, but as soon as I've come to church and then left, I really do have a change in my mental understanding of where I am, and I go out happy. So our church body is crucial for us to share this love and fellowship of Jesus. And in our Holy Communion service for the Epiphany season, in the Eucharist prayer, we pray that, Remember, Lord, your church in every land, 
Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Let's move back to our people in Corinth in verse 12. For some seem to follow whoever may be uh, who they wanted to on, on this whim. Some seem to have followed Paul closely. Obviously, he's got a strong witness and testimony on his road to Damascus, especially when his prior uh, history of his participation of the persecution of the Jews, uh, of, the, sorry, of, the early, of the early followers of Jesus, is considered. Others followed Apollos, who was more intellectual, especially in philosophy and rhetoric. Others followed Cephas of the Jewish background and looked to Peter and James as advocates of keeping Jewish law, as well as having profound Christian faith. Finally, there were those who would appeal directly to Christ. Still others who would have said that they believed in God, um, but they could disregard the scriptures. Doesn't that resonate with some of today's people? Verse 12, the key phrase in Paul, Paul's text here is, I belong. And I want to repeat that again. I belong. We don't belong to anybody. We belong to Jesus. And he, Paul again is reminding us that we don't belong to any preacher, any speaker, any worship leader. We belong to Jesus. And I think we need to hammer that home in our minds and our hearts. Paul is telling us that the cornerstone of our faith is coming together, nearer to Christ. For as we come nearer to Christ, we will realize how to come closer to each other. And a common purpose will follow, to witness to the world the love and power of our Savior Jesus. And isn't that one of our, the greatest purpose of being a Christian? And doesn't our world need this just now? I often, when I'm wandering around on trains, buses, ferries, goodness knows where I am, I look at the utter despair on people's faces. And I can read in their minds, many of them have no faith. And I pray for them in my own heart and mind, please God, put your hands on these people. Because they need you. But they need us. The unity of the church results in a mission to a world looking for truth, forgiveness, meaning, and salvation. Time spent in conflict could be spent helping those in need, of which there are many, and bringing people to God. In fact, thank you to Olive for this. The Anglican Church, she gave me this in cameo the other day, I never knew this. The Anglican Church has five marks of recognition in communion with others. One, sharing the good news. Two, nurturing followers of Jesus. Three, seeking justice and reconciliation. The more we are polarized, the more we need reconciliation. Offering loving service to everybody. Caring for creation. Personally, I've always been fascinated and at times questioned different facets, different approaches to church, especially in its dogma and worship, which can lead to certain division. And yet I find it spiritually interesting and at times inspiring to visit other churches. And sometimes if you don't see me in here, I'm probably in another church somewhere else in the city. But I always let myself be guided by the following tenets. One. Do they have a Bible and do they preach it? Do they follow, do they practice baptism? Do they celebrate Holy Communion? Is salvation taught through our Saviour for what our Saviour has done for us? And do they make it clear we are all saved by grace and not through our own good works? Obviously, we can all have different viewpoints about many, many issues, from football to politics to whatever you wish, from different types of worship. But we must never, ever, ever be divisive. We can never, ever agree on every issue, but we can work harmoniously together. It's the cross that is crucial. And when I wrote that word crucial out, 
automatically have thought of the Via Crucis um, of, of Jesus' path on the, on the path of Dolorosa. That, cru that is a Latin word, crucial, meaning the cross. So every time you hear that word crucial, you say, it's crucial for me, think about, no, no, it's crucial for you, us, that we believe in Jesus, all right? So that crucial means the root has come from the cross. What truly, truly matters is that Jesus is Lord of all. Petty differences should never, ever divide Christians. We need to proclaim the gospel, as Paul says in verse 17. So the cross of Christ <clears throat> might not be emptied of its power. And this is done through unity, love and harmony of action, not through anger, argument and arrogance. Just a little anecdote to conclude. The other week, and some of you know this, I've had all kinds of problems with my teeth, right? But on Boxing Day, you can't see it now, but that front tooth dropped off, all cracked off. And I was living in absolute paranoia because I've, I've got this fear of going to the dentist and having my teeth taken out. But I was left with this huge gaping hole at the front of my mouth. Maybe not a big deal for you think. I wasn't bothered about that you could see this big hole, maybe look about 90 like, but that was another issue. But I had difficulty in forming my words because my tongue kept getting stuck in the big hole, right? And I couldn't eat properly. But then I sat down and I realized for the body to work, the human body to work, in complete unity and harmony, even a tiny little tooth is important. That is the same for us. Every one of us has got our major, minor, major part to play in the unity of the church. So it's through our unity we can bring people in for them to follow and believe in the power, the saving power of Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, he has fixed it. It's a temporary crown and I've got to go back. So praise the Lord. Talking about Harry Potter, my dentist is like Harry Potter. He's got all this kind of, I don't, I don't know how he does it, but he's wonderful. So it is that as Christians, we need to be united for the benefit of not one, but of all, in the love of Jesus. This week, we continue in prayer for Christian unity. And in fact, there's a service afternoon in the Anglican Cathedral. It began last Wednesday, and it will last until this Wednesday. And again, another little anecdote with that. I've got a very close friend in Italy. He's 30. He's training to be a priest. It's called Pasquale. And I hold him very, very close to my heart. Uh, and we, we are always in contact on those horrible little things we call phones, right? That WhatsApp stuff. And he got in touch with me on Wednesday. He said, Joy, Christian unity this week. I'm going to be praying for the Anglican Church, the Pasquale, and I will pray for the Catholic Church. And I pray that we come together. Every day we're sending little messages to each other what we're praying for, okay? Um, to, yesterday I think it was the war in Ukraine. The other day it was uh, the need to pray for the rich people to, you know, for the division of wealth, if you like. Again, Christian unity. He lives over there, Catholic, I live here, Anglican. Makes no difference. For me, it makes no difference. We are all Christians. So, with all that, let us pray. We are living in a divided world. We pray, dear Lord, that you heal any divisions we may create in our daily lives, in our relationships with family, friends and church members. We pray for unity with all our Christian brothers and sisters worldwide, that we always put Christ at the center of our lives, that the love of Christ is the anchor in our lives and not division. We ask all this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, thank you, Joy. It's easy, as I said last week, it's easy to see other people's faults, isn't it? <clears throat> um, but the Bible's very clear. Jesus himself is very clear that we see the... Uh, not to, to look at the speck in our brother or sister's eye when in fact there is a log in our own. And it requires humility for us. But a humble church is one, as Joy has been saying to us today, is united. And a united church is something that brings God's kingdom into the world with 
great power. Wherever there's been movements of churches together and churches coming together to love one another, revival has come because God comes and he blesses. Psalm 133 says, when brothers, when God's people dwell together in unity, God gives blessing. It really is that simple and it's that hard, but it's that powerful. Our vision is often taken away from that reality. I think that may be because there's an enemy who wants to scatter us. I don't know. It's not always easy, is it? But we're going to bring ourselves to God now and we're going to ask Jesus to be the centre. And uh, so we're going to sing our next song on there, uh, which is number 10, if you're following along in the, in the book. Should we stand? going to say the creed together now so we remain standing just to say that before we bring ourselves to God in prayer we say together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, folks. Have a minute or two now. We're just going to uh, have that song Cornerstone. And in that time, we're just going to allow God some space. 
in our hearts just to bring ourselves back in line with Jesus who is our cornerstone so we're going to have that on and maybe you want to write something down or you want to just bring yourself to God just encourage you to pray for God's people some around the world today who are suffering for their faith some who are struggling because of the difficult conversations in the wider church there may be some who are facing calamity or just had some bad news but we all together are united in Christ we belong to him we are his body and we today each one of us here precious belonging to him so we're going to listen to that song and pray for the church When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds me there. So as we just bring ourselves to God now, we thank you, our gracious and heavenly Father, that you have called us to be part of your body here on earth. We pray for the church today, whether scattered or gathered, we pray that you by your spirit would visit us and renew us. We pray, Lord, that you would give us strength and healing and peace. We pray for power to proclaim the gospel afresh to this generation we pray for the young people across our own nation that you would uh, raise up a, a new generation of christian disciples who will carry your message into the years ahead we pray lord that you would uh, protect those who are suffering for the name of christ 
And we pray for any today who are struggling with all the wranglings that are going on, the political wranglings, particularly over sexuality. God, there are many who are hurting today. And we hurt because they belong to us. Lord Jesus, we don't have the answers to all of these problems, but we know that we can lift our prayers to you. And we ask, Lord, that you will come and bring strength and comfort to all of our brothers and sisters here and across the world today. And united, may we uh, stand on your promises. May we bring Christ to this dark world. And we pray, Lord, that through the witness and through the prayers and through the presence of your church, that your light will shine. So as we pray for the church, we just bring to you our own hearts, the things that are on our hearts, the things that we've seen this week, in the, all the troubles in the world. Help us to be a prayerful people. We know that prayer changes nations. We lift you our own community. We pray, Lord, that your hand will be on this place. Help us to witness to your glory. <coughs> and be able to offer the hope that we have in Christ. We bring to you those who are in need today, bring comfort, wholeness and peace, especially to those who suffer in mind or body or spirit. We pray that we may have compassion to be channels of your healing love. And so, Lord, we commend into your hands those today who need your healing touch, those in our hearts, and those who belong to our church family here, that they may find your power and your healing this day. Loving Father, by your grace, we long to see more people knowing Jesus and more justice in the world. Help us to live as your disciples in the power of the Spirit and to work to your praise and glory. Amen. Bring our prayers together. We say the words that, of the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just before we have our final song, um, just to remind you, uh, the encouragement cards, uh, do find someone to encourage. You will be blessed, they will be blessed, and uh, it will be a good thing. Thanks, Joy, for the challenge on unity. Boy, do we need it now. <laughs> and uh, keep praying for the church. Keep praying that we will stay united and strong in the Lord. Um, notices. Quick fire. Cameo. Armchair exercises. Sounds good. Come along. 1.30. No, 1 o'clock. Crumbs. 10.30, 12.30. Been going well. Very good toast, if you don't mind me saying. It's there, and it's uh, plenty of tea and coffee. So um, you're there this week. Yeah, it's going to be good.
It's going to be good. Um, PCC, do pray for us, PCC. Nothing like major on the, on the agenda, but we obviously just want to hear God as we think about and make decisions about church. So that's this, sorry, this Tuesday, that is the 24th. And then um, don't forget next week, we've got Kate Yates coming from Liverpool Youth for Christ, our friend Anne Lydia there, who's at the front on that picture with me. And that picture was taken when we had... 70 odd Barlow's kids here for the transition day last year. It was absolutely amazing. That was in June, I think. And uh, so Kate's going to tell us about what they're doing with young people. We may even have a member of Fazakley High with us. Uh, sorry, Dixon's Academy, I should call it now. So uh, we're wanting to um, talk about young people and um, have a time just to see what they're doing with young people and how we can be engaged with and praying for and encouraging young people in our city and obviously across the world, I guess. Got any spare stamps uh, that are used? Uh, pass them on to Lynn for the donkey sanctuary. Uh, we need to get some feedback on that, find out how many donkeys we've saved or whatever you do. Uh, just once, I will come back to you. Was that on one of the notices? No. Um, and uh, it's not too late. If you want to just join in, you can join in at any time during the year. Bible in the year, get your little app. Um, I haven't read yesterday's yet. I may not read it all, but I'm just doing it bit by bit, day by day. And uh, I'll pick up today's and I'll read as much as I can. And a few people have shared what they're, what they're hearing, which is great. Do you need to say something, Laura? Is that, we, no, no, that's fine. Um, but you do. And uh, so good, this is good news. Yeah, do you want to come and share some good news with us? And is there any other good news? I know what you're going to say, I was going to ask you. Ah, not so much good news. Well, it is good news. For those that don't know, Jenny will be 40 years young next Saturday. So we are having a little do. That's as much as Jenny knows. We're having a party. No? Secret society. <laughs> if you are free next Saturday, 7 till 10, drop us a message and I'll tell you where the venue is and what the plan is. But she doesn't know yeah great yeah, so. uh, happy birthday should we give her a happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear jenny happy birthday to you let's give her a round of applause so young so young i can say that St. Paul's a food bank. We need toothpaste and toothbrushes. To do any toothpaste or toothbrushes for food bank, if you're able to donate, that's great. Any other good news? Is there any other good news before we have our final song? No, well, I'm sure there is. You can share it over coffee. Uh, but happy birthday for Saturday to Jenny. And uh, we've got lots to thank God for, haven't we, in all sorts of ways. We're going to uh, pray, sing this final song, uh, Build Your Kingdom Here, which I forgot what number it is, 34 or something in the, um, in the books. 34, well done. That was a guess. Pretty good, eh? Right, let's stand to sing. Do you want to bring the... Um
Wow, you guys have been singing on form today. And that's our job, isn't it? To ask God to set the church on fire, to change the atmosphere. And that changes all kinds of things. So uh, as his people, we're going to have a blessing now as we finish. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And just as we finish... Our kids have done, well, say kids, I think, and some adults, have done an amazing frieze like this picture they painted to show unity and what unity looks like being gathered and united. And uh, we're going to get a picture of it, forward it over, which we'll send out later. But if you want to go and have a brief glimpse, go in and have a little look. And I want to see that displayed in our church somewhere out here because it is amazing. So go and have a look and we're going to have some coffee after that.
I believe.